Solving the greatest sum divisible by three problem from lead code using dynamic programming is what we are going to do in this video of Joey's Tech. Welcome my friends, I am Joey. And yes, I'll be telling you how to think of the approach to the DP solution of this problem. This is one of the exciting problems I came across and let me tell you, solving this problem using DP will feel truly magical to you, especially in the way we are going to approach the solution. So without further ado, let's look into the problem statement. Now, you are given an array of integers, nums, like this. These are the elements inside the array nums that we are going to consider for our problem. The ask is to find the maximum possible sum from this array nums that is divisible by three. So if we carefully take a look at it, then if we add three, six, one, and eight, then we are going to get 18. And that happens to be the maximum possible sum divisible by three from this array nums. So we need to come up with a dynamic programming algorithm that produces this result 18. But before that, a humble request to you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss out on these videos, especially these dynamic programming videos I create for you. All right, you can see the array over here. Now, let me tell you that I tried a few approaches of DP to solve this problem, like the two variables approach using which I have solved numerous problems using dynamic programming. But especially in this problem, I found those approaches getting complicated. So the basic idea or the stepping stone to solve this problem using DP lies in focusing on the phrase divisible by three. When we divide any integer by three, then what can happen? the integer either will be completely divisible by three or will give the remainders one or two, right? Just keep this in mind. And now look at the problem in this manner. What the first integer in this array is? It is three and it is divisible by three. So the greatest sum till here is three, okay? Now we move to the next integer, which is six. So six is also divisible by three. That's one candidate. And we have a candidate already present, which is three. And since the problem is about finding the sum, the greatest sum, the maximum possible sum, hence we get our third candidate as well, which will be the summation of six and three, which comes out as nine. Look, all these candidates are divisible by three. So we pick the greatest one out of these three, which is going to be nine. So till here, the greatest sum that is going to be divisible by three will be nine. All right. We move to the next integer of the array now, which is five. We are going to expand the horizon of our understanding. So make sure you watch this part very carefully. The candidate, which is the greatest sum divisible by three till here is nine, right? Now we add five to it. When we add five to nine, we are going to get 14. When we divide 14 by 3, we get 2 as the remainder. So no way 14 is the greatest sum that is divisible by 3. But we need to keep track of it because it will help us in the future to find the greatest sum divisible by 3 because there are more elements remaining. So we open three slots. The first one is going to store the largest sum for which the remainder comes out as 0 when it is divided by 3. The second one will store the largest sum for which the remainder comes out as one when it is divided by three. And the third one is going to store the largest sum for which the remainder comes out as two when it is divided by three. So 14 goes in this slot of remainder two. But let's start over. Let's start from the first iteration so that you understand in a much proper way. In the first iteration, the integer is three. When it is divided by three, the remainder comes out as zero. So the greatest sum till here will be three, which we have already seen. So we are going to put three in this slot of remainder zero. Note why we have put it in this slot of remainder zero, because the remainder came out as zero when we divided it by three. Now, in the first iteration, the other slots will be empty. I'm going to fill these empty spaces with uh, a zero. Now, the algorithm is going to move to the second iteration. Here, three will be added to six. The addition of three and six will be nine, which is completely divisible by three. So nine also goes in the slot of remainder zero. All right. 
and t slots of remainder 1 and remainder 2 will have a 0 as their values because there has been no greatest sum encountered till here for which the remainder comes out as either 1 or 2 when they are divided by 3. In the third iteration, 9 will be added to 5 and that is going to give us the sum as 14. The remainder comes out as 2 when 14 is divided by 3. Hence, we are going to put 14 in this slot of remainder 2. But wait a minute. There is another slot that we are going to fill and that is the slot of remainder 0 where the greatest possible sum so far is 9. So we won't hesitate in bringing 9 here in this slot of remainder 0. So for every iteration, the DP algorithm is going to compare the values present in all these three slots against the values present in the same slots in the previous iteration. And between the two values, the greater one will be populated in the respective slots. So for the algorithm, the default value present in these slots will be 0. 0 compared against 9 will bring 9 over here. That's how algorithm is going to work. The same comparison will happen for these slots as well. 0 will be compared against 0, so no change. 14 will be compared against 0. 14 is much greater, so 14 stays populated in this cell of remainder 2 in the third column. We move to the next integer now, which is 1. We add 1 to this 9. What do we get? We get 10. The remainder comes out as 1 when 10 is divided by 3. So what we are going to do? We are going to straight away put 10 in this slot of remainder 1. We are going in a much formal way now, the way the DP algorithm is going to proceed. This is how I shaped my own understanding, guys. Now, we are going to add 1 to this 0 as well. Okay, we are going to add this integer to the values of every slot. By adding 1 to this 0, we are going to get 1. So when we are going to divide 1 by 3, the remainder is going to automatically come out as 1. So we try to populate this slot of remainder 1 with 1, but there is already a giant value sitting over here, which is 10. 10 is greater than 1. So no way we are going to put 1 over here. We keep 10 and discard 1. You are now going to ask me why I didn't add 5 to these zeros of slot 1 and 2 or why I didn't add the 6 to these zeros of slots 1 and 2. The answer is I didn't want to create any confusion earlier. Now if you go back and if you add 5 to this 0 then you are going to get 5. You divide it by 3. The remainder is going to come out as 2. Hence you will try to populate this cell with 5. 14 is already present over here which is much greater than 5. So 5 gets discarded and 14 stays. Similarly, if you add 6 to this 0, then you are going to get 6 only. You divide it by 3, you get the remainder as 0. You try to populate 6 in this cell of slot 0. 9 is already sitting over here. 6 compared against 9, 9 is much greater. So 9 stays, 6 gets discarded. All right. Now, coming back uh, to this iteration only, we add 1 to this 14. We are going to get 15. When 15 is divided by 3, the remainder comes out as 0. So, we populate 15 in this cell. Alright, now, after the values are populated in each of these slots, the algorithm is going to do one final thing for every iteration. It's going to compare the values in each of these slots against the value in the same slot of the previous iteration and the greater value is going to get the priority. So 15 will be compared against 9 since 15 is greater, hence 15 stays. 10 will be compared against 0 since 10 is greater, hence 10 stays. And 0 will be compared against 14 since 14 is much greater, hence 0 gets replaced by 14. Understand the basic idea guys. We are capturing the greatest sums which give remainders 0, 1 and 2 for every iteration. We now have 8 as the next integer. We add 8 to 15. We get 23. That goes to slot with remainder 2. Alright. Now we add 8 to 10. That gives us 18. It is divisible by 3. Completely divisible by 3. So 18 goes to the slot of remainder 0. Now 
we are going to add 8 to 14 that is going to give us 22 we put it in the slot with a remainder 1 22 divided by 3 gives us the remainder 1 hence 22 goes in this slot of remainder 1 now these cells are populated the algorithm is going to compare this 18 against this 15 18 is greater so 18 stays it's going to compare this value of slot 1 with the previous value in the same slot 1 22 is greater than 10 so 22 stays and finally it is going to compare 23 against 14 23 is also greater than 14 so 23 stays remember why we compare the value calculated in a particular slot with the value in the same slot from the previous iteration because we are looking for the greatest sum for each of these slots if the algorithm hadn't done so we wouldn't have got 9 over here or 14 over here oh goodness me the matrix is full so this value the value in the final column in the slot of remainder 0 is the answer so 18 is the maximum possible sum from this array of integers that is completely divisible by 3. If you want to check out the Java code for this dynamic programming problem, then you can find it in my GitHub repository. You can find the link to it in the description box. Also check out my playlist of dynamic programming problems where I have explained the approach to getting to the solution of hundreds of problems that can be solved using dynamic programming. With this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed learning to solve this problem of greatest sum divisible by three using dynamic programming. If you have any doubts related to this problem, please let me know in the comment section. I'll try my best to solve them. I look forward to helping you with programming and algorithms. And only for this video, goodbye and take very good care of yourself.